All right, we are rolling. All right. Well, another quarantine chat. We're here with Reading Royals assistant coach Nick Luco, who's back in King of Prussia for now, a little bit closer to Reading after spending the last couple weeks and months up in uh, Connecticut. So, Nick, what's going on? How you doing? How's the apartment looking? Just give us a little rundown here. Yeah, yeah, I'm hanging in there. It's uh, It's been a long two months. Um, was up at my parents there for a couple months, and, um, you know, my lease is up here in King of Prussia the next couple of weeks, so I'm starting to clean it out and kind of move back home for the summer just with everything going on and all the question marks. It's just, uh, you know, I'd rather be close to family at this point. I think that's pretty uh, pretty telling for a lot of people. A lot of the Royals players are obviously, you know, back at home, and it's uh, it's kind of refreshing in a way. I mean, I know – a lot of people like to harp on the negatives of things, but what have been some of the positives of being able to, you know, take a little bit of a mental break? Yeah, definitely. I think the first couple of weeks, it was uh, pretty nice to catch up on some sleep and, um, you know, hang out with the family. But then, uh, you know, I start to get a little stir crazy, kind of run out of TV shows. Um, you know, K-Mac and I have been doing a little bit of some projects, you know, just hockey related stuff just to stay busy. But, um, you know, hopefully with the weather getting nicer here, we can be outside a little bit more and, you know, be safe and quarantined, um, you know, outside together. You uh, were saying that um, before we hit record here that kind of like what a, what a day in quarantine would be like in the Luco household up in Connecticut is sort of everybody does their own separate thing for the day and, you know, comes together at the end of the day. So, you know, take us through a typical day in the last two months, because I'm sure like us all, we've relived about 60 equivalent days here in the last couple months. Yeah, yeah. So everyone, uh, so my brother was just finishing up school. He uh, graduated last week from uh, Sacred Heart. So he was, he was busy with uh, his schoolwork. And then I would be in my room doing, you know, some hockey related video, stuff like that. And then, uh, you know, my dad's been busy with, with work himself, my mom, you know, doing stuff around the house. And then, um, you know, we'd come together for dinner, have a nice dinner, uh, maybe watch a TV show or a movie, and then kind of go our separate ways again. So it's it's been pretty good. A lot of uh, a lot of good takeout places have been opening up again. I know some people took a break. Is there any? What was the go to go to meal, go to takeout spot that uh, really brought the family together a little bit more? Uh, well, I kind of consider myself a little bit of a grill master, so I've been uh, firing up the grill quite a bit. Um, you know, in our, our crazy schedule during the season, it's it's tough to cook, you know, when you're home for, you know, only one or two nights a week. So you're always eating out. So it's been nice to, uh, you know, have some home-cooked meals. Let's uh, do a little quick rundown of this uh, last regular season. Um, your first year as assistant coach, obviously the transition from playing four full seasons with the Royals. And I think, you know, it's one thing to ask it mid-season, uh, you know, in a pregame interview, what's it like? How you doing? What have you learned? But You've, take, you've had a couple of weeks to maybe ponder it over a little bit or get a little bit of perspective. So um, how would you assess your first year as a coach in the ECHL? Well, it was definitely a whirlwind, um, you know, kind of a crazy year. I think, you know, with the new ownership taking over and, um, you know, everything was great at the rink every day. We had, we had you know, it seems like the Royals were really coming back strong. We were having great crowds and great group of guys that were – we we're pretty poised to make a run there, um, you know, clinching a playoff spot when we did so early and then um, having everything sh shut down, you know, with 60 games in, which is kind of sad and kind of sucks. But um, all in all, I thought it was a really great, great first year for uh, my coaching career. And, uh, you know, it's sort of interesting because I, I've been thinking back just occasionally the last few weeks about, you know, kind of the 24 hours maybe leading up to when everything happened in the world that forced the shutdown. And I was thinking back on the bus ride on March 9th for the school day game on the 10th in Wheeling. And uh, it was the going to be the first game after the Royals had clinched. And, you know, the hockey player mentality, athlete mentality is, you know, you're not thinking about really maybe what's going on in the world. You're just focused on, on, you know, the game and stuff, but um, you know, reflect a little bit back for us on those sort of 24, 48 hours before everything happened in the world and, you know, what the mentality was like among the boys, among you and coach um, and, you know, sort of around the, the whole uh, organization in general, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it was, uh, you know, that week was pretty crazy, uh, especially for myself. Um, you know, we clinched the playoff spot that weekend and then, um, 
you know, came back, got thrown out of the game on Sunday and suspended a game. So our last game of the year, I was, you know, it was just me behind the bench. Um, so that was awesome. We had a great win up in Wheeling to, uh, on that school day game to finish that, that brutal stretch of three straight weeks of four and fives, I believe. So, um, you know, everything was, you know, going really well for our team. We clinching the playoff spot, um, starting guys back, you know, from Lehigh. They're coming back from injury. The, the boys were rolling. We were playing the, probably our best hockey of the year. And then for it just, you know, basically in one night, you know, shut down like that, it was, um, it, you know, you couldn't believe it at first. It was, uh, I remember just sitting in the office with KMAC when we found out, you know, everything was shut down. It was just, we were just sitting there and, you know, quiet. Um, you know, a little bit of sadness and, uh, you know, depression kicks in. Yeah, um, you know, not to make light of that, because that's a real thing that, I, you know, a lot of us were facing, but, um, you know, what you guys are working towards all season long as a coaching staff is to put the most successful team on the ice as possible and, you know, work as hard as possible. And hopefully the fruition of that is to, you know, end up with the Kelly Cup in your hands um, around what would be the next couple weeks if the Royals um, were still going. But nonetheless, you know, the Royals really restored the roar in the front office with, you know, attendance going up 9%. The team also really established an, an, uh, an identity this year. Um, from your perspective, what was that identity of this Royals team this season? Well, I thought we had a little bit of everything. We were, uh, you know, big and fast uh, up front. Um, you know, we could play physical, but we had a lot of skill. Um, you know, I think we were built for the playoffs. I, I, I really do believe that, you know, we would wear teams down in a seven game series while, you know, being able to keep our speed and momentum going. Um, we had a great decor. Um, you know, we almost probably would have had, you know, four defensemen close to 30 points, I think at the end of the year. And then, you know, we had the two, you know, Sandy and, and Usti were great rookies, uh, you know, in the pipes. And then, with uh, Usti going up, Tom came in and was a great veteran uh, presence uh, for Sandy, and he was playing great hockey in that first as well. So, um, you know, it's we had a great group uh, on and off the ice. Everyone came to work every day, and um, you know, that's that's kind of the most frustrating thing is all the what ifs. You know, going into that last month of the season. Before we get to some uh, random quarantine questions. Uh, you know, becoming a coach out of playing pro, uh, there's a lot of challenges. We've talked about them, you know, over the last calendar year, almost at this point, a number of times. But day to day, what are some important qualities for a, a coach to have when you're around the boys? Well, I think, uh, you know, as an assistant, you kind of want to be that uh, middleman between the head coach and the players. Um, you kind of want to get that feel for the room, how guys are feeling that day. And, um, you know, just have that you know, confident, uh, upbeat mentality, no matter what's going on. If if you're on a five game, you know, winning streak, or if you're on a five game losing streak, it doesn't matter. You're still, you're bringing that energy and uh, passion to the rink every day. So the guys can feed off of it. What are some of the differences, similarities to being the middleman versus when you're the captain of the team, like you were your final year in 18, 19? Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's a little different. I think um, you kind of, you're overseeing everybody a little bit more. Whereas uh, the captain, you're just, you know, obviously you want to lead the team, but you want to lead by example. Um, and I think as an assistant coach, you're, you're really, as a, as a coaching staff, you're always really looking to the entire you know team uh, and making sure you're getting the, the most out of everyone every day. You've uh, watched a lot of games over with coach. I know that that's one of the things that at least K-Mac was working on, tracking every goal scored by or, you know, against the Royals. Uh, anything come out of that that maybe you guys didn't expect? Uh, from what we didn't expect, I know if, uh, you know, we, we were joking the other day, if our PK was a little better the first half of the year, we probably would be in first place, <laughs> yeah. you know, at, at, at the end. But we were still, uh, you know, right there behind Newfoundland. Um, I think it's, it just goes to show how much uh, we really dominated some games throughout the year. Um, you know, we didn't really give up a whole lot. And um, especially the second half of the year when everyone was bought in and kind of figured out the system and the way we wanted to play, we were uh, pretty scary to play against. All right, let's go into we're going to build a quarantine super team. Uh, I don't know how good any of these questions are. I just thought of them a little bit before. But um, so you have to build a, a super team 
of, uh, we'll just write down a couple of things here. But first thing is uh, your quarantine super team go-to breakfast. What was your, what's been your go-to breakfast during quarantine or something that, you know, start off with that. It's going to be a good day. Uh, so I, whew, that's tough. Uh, kind of been trying to switch it up a bit, but I guess my go-to is, um, you know, eggs and bacon, uh, you know, a couple eggs over easy, some bacon. And then if we have some leftover, uh, potatoes from the night before, we kind of make a little, uh, a breakfast skillet. A little home fry action, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Love it. All right. Uh, you mentioned you've been watching some shows, you know, with the fam or movies, uh, anything stick out that you've watched the last couple months? Yeah, obviously, uh, Tiger King, that was uh, pretty big the first couple weeks of quarantine. Um, then uh, Ozark, that lasted only like a week, so those 10 episodes. But right now I'm on to uh, Suits, which I never watched before, and I think there's, you know, seven or eight seasons, so I should be pretty busy for the time being. And then on top of that, The Last Dance on ESPN, which has been uh, awesome to watch every Sunday. Yeah, I know you're a huge, uh, huge all sports fan, all Philly sports fan. Love every, pretty much every sport out there. So uh, I've been, I've been watching the Last Dance. What do you, uh, what have you taken out of last episode? Talked about Michael Jordan's leadership. I thought it was really, a really good uh, summary and fair to him about what he was all about. If you saw that last one, yeah, for sure. I thought those last two episodes were the best uh, by far. It's kind of crazy because. Um, you know, I was probably six or seven you around those last years of MJ's career. So I kind of remember it vaguely, but I didn't, you know, totally understand what was going on. So it's pretty awesome to see, you know, like what, what the whole team went through and how much, uh, you know, between Jerry Krause and the, and the rest of the guys, uh, how, you know, from a coaching perspective, how Phil uh, kept everyone together and in check to be able to win, you know, all those titles and, you know, all those years. All right, back to the super team talk. So uh, your quarantine's average screen time a day, what do you got? How many hours a day? I'm at about five to six, I think, right now. I would probably say I'm around there. I've, I haven't looked, but yeah, I'm probably on my phone quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, got screen time. All right, last one. Uh, one you have to pick one emoji to describe, uh, describe quarantine. Any particular uh, emoji come to mind? If you want to scroll through it, you can go for it. Uh, April with all the rain and stuff, I'd probably say the poop emoji. Being stuck inside five, six days a week, I was, I was going insane. But uh, the last couple of weeks, the weather's been better. So getting outside more. Um, you know, the, the ones who really love quarantine right now are the dogs because everyone's home all day. Yeah, how's Scout doing? What's up with, uh, with Scout, your dog? Coop, you mean? <laughs> oh, no, sorry, I said Scout. Coop, my bad. Yeah, uh, Coop, Coop's <laughs> loving. Yeah, he's loving quarantine, and uh, my parents have a dog too, so they're they're buddies. So they're he's outside nonstop. Uh, we don't even have electric fence. He just hangs out in the backyard and chases squirrels, and then you know chases a tennis ball. Okay, so to recap, your quarant your quarantine super team consists of some eggs and bacon, maybe a little home fries on the side from the leftover potatoes. Uh, you're watching an episode of Tiger King, Ozark Suits, catching some of the last dance while staring at your phone for five to six hours a day, and maybe a sunshine emoji right now with the weather getting a little bit warmer. I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good super team. Is that is that all right to roll with? Or yeah, yeah, it's good. Uh, it's it's pretty good. And of course, the dog emoji too. We throw in there too. All right, <laughs> uh, all right. So we did like a one to ten. What do you miss? And you sort of have to rank it. Well, not sort of have to. You have to give us a ranking <laughs> of one to ten here. Um, so if you had to rank one to 10, um, about the bus on a scale of one to 10, where would you rank that right now? Uh, I mean, I would, I would say a nine. Um, I think I was joking with Jaybird the other day. I would take that three and three after Christmas in three different cities playing in Brampton that last day, getting in at five in the morning, playing at I think two o'clock that afternoon. I think I'd do anything for that right now. <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much with you. Um, does it influence it at all if I said that you have to sleep on the floor for each one of those three games like you did? Because I think you kind of did for those I know. three. <laughs> I know I did. I took one for the team on that one. But, um, yeah, I'd take it right now for sure. <laughs> uh, how much do you miss growing up watching the uh, – the old flyers right now, or you've had a chance to, you know, watch any old flyers games that they've been showing, or that's not really a one to 10, just uh, you know, how much do you miss that type of stuff? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's funny. Um, 
probably a month ago now, one of the Fridays, uh, we watched game seven, 2010, when the Flyers uh, came back and beat the Bruins when they were down 3-0 in the series and then 3 nothing in game seven, came back and uh, won that game. So we watched that one night. So that was, uh, that was pretty fun to watch again. Maybe um, on the, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to, I was going to go on to the next question. I know Sean Podine was your favorite Flyers player growing up too. I was going to mention that name and there's yeah. kind of sprinkle it in. So. Yeah, we've, uh, yeah, we've watched some highlights. I think the big thing <laughs> what we do is on our Friday nights is like, we'll have a couple of beers and we'll fire up a couple of YouTube concerts, uh, you know, to kind of watch some uh, classic rock on there. So it's been a lot of fun too. <laughs> That's uh, that sounds good. I know there's been a lot of like tribute concerts too. Uh, here in yeah. here in New Jersey, you can catch the like Bruce Springsteen's just doing like concerts in his basement or whatever the last few weeks, and they'll just randomly come on, uh, randomly come on TV. So I've uh, I've been a big fan. I have to like find a way to bootleg it and send it over to K Mac, especially if ACDC just randomly appeared next to him as well. I think that'd be like the super team. Yeah, I, I sent him a couple links to uh, some shows a couple times so far, so I think he's watched a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, how much do you miss the, uh, this is a clear 10 out of 10, a, a victory, uh, victory post-game beer after a big home game? Yeah, that's, uh, I'd say it's probably like a 20 out of 10. Um, <laughs> it's funny, my uh, brother's girlfriend's actually from Reading, so she went down for uh, Mother's Day to her parents' house, and then uh, she's been staying at our house as well, so she was able to get me a couple cases of Reading Premium, so I'm staying, uh, staying, I guess, hydrated with the uh, running premiums these days. Yeah, you already uh, destroyed what was going to be one part of our game, which is where I was going to pull up on the Zoom here. I'll do it anyway, just because why not? I was going to do the share screen. Let's see. Voila. <laughs> yeah, gonna, there it is. Yeah, I forgot to do the uh, how much do you miss on a scale of 1 to 10 and just pull up the pick. But uh, definitely a, a friend of uh, – the Royals uh, staff with Sly Fox obviously being a big partner while we pulled up their website and then uh, the premiums. All right, couple more. Uh, let's do this. This is kind of the last last thing here. So uh, I know when you were hired last summer, K-Mac was saying, man, he's doing such a good job. He's chomping at the bit, talking about you. Um, and he jumped right in with some of the recruiting. So I uh, was hoping that, you know, you could kind of take us through maybe a sample, not to give away all the secrets, but a sample recruiting call if I I know that I would never qualify to play for the Royals but if I was and you were interested in getting someone to be on the team what's a uh, what's a recruiting call like if they pick up the phone well we talk about you know all the uh, great guys we've had around uh, the last couple of years and you know how much everyone loves playing in Reading and especially with um, you know all the stuff going into West Reading with all the breweries and restaurants and stuff um, we, we use our players a lot too, to help us, you know, guys, everyone knows everybody. So if we can get someone to call on behalf of us as well, and, you know, talking to agents and, uh, everyone like that, it's been, uh, you know, pretty good for us lately. What, what's your, uh, you and K-Mac sort of, what's the, the final, Hey, we got to sign you or offering you a contract line. How does that normally, normally take shape or is there a given a good magician never reveals the secrets, but is there kind of a, a go-to sort of sentiment you guys might use? Some guys are so brutal at responding to texts and phone calls that eventually we just tell the agent like, Hey, if uh, you're not going to sign, like we're going to have to, you know, look elsewhere and then guys will start to panic and then just sign right away. So yeah. that's just the way it is these days, I guess. Now uh, I was interested in this too, because you know, this summer is obviously a really different one. Um, with the outlook of potentially guys going to Europe, whether they will or not, um, that remains to be seen. Don't know about the guys from North America if they want to make that trip with their families, given the situation in the world. That adds a layer, also adds a layer that some guys are, you know, their families might be struggling right now. It's just, you know, it sucks, but that's the way it is. Um, a lot of people are, are, you know, need of some positive feelings right now and positive thing to happen. But um, how does that change the next few weeks and months as you and Coach McDonald really dive into trying to recruit guys and build a team for next season? Yeah, it's definitely – it's it's going to be tough just because no one really knows what's – you know, when are we going to start, when is everything going to be back. You know, everyone's hoping we can start in October, but, um, you know, I, I, no one knows right now. It's just a lot of question marks. So, uh, lucky for us, 
at the end of the year, a lot of guys, you know, really want to come back next year. So um, staying in touch with, you know, with the guys from the team last year and, um, you know, hopefully we can get as many guys as uh, we can to come back, you know, when we start again at some point and kind of have a little bit of unfinished business going into next season. Got three jerseys behind you. Vermont, I guess that's the, the Lehigh Valley jersey. Your head's kind of blocking it. Yep, yeah. Yep, Adam's jersey. And then yeah, the, and uh, I got uh, I got Dubuque there in the end there. So just my last four years. So kind of a bit of a man cave in my apartment, which is pretty awesome to me. I was going to say that's a, that's a pretty nice uh, collection of jerseys going back all the way to the way to the junior days. So I, I have to assume that'll be uh, taking it with yeah. you wherever wherever the new place is once you once you get the move out done. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, I'm kind of dreading all that. I hate moving. It's such a, such a pain, but um you know, just going to have to grind it out here, I guess. <laughs> just like a good uh, a good hockey player would. Nick, it's been uh been a yeah. fun catch up here. Thanks again for hopping on and telling us what's going on with your life. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for uh having me on. All right.